I mean, it's an addiction. There's no other way of putting it. It's like having a bottle of vodka, then having another bottle of vodka, then having another bottle of vodka. It's the same thing. Just inability to control food in any way whatsoever. Or if I was controlling it, just being incredibly strict. Do you know what? I've got these wonderful kids. I've got this great career. And yet I'm still secretly eating and feeling deeply ashamed of myself. You know, what? what's that? What was this storm in your 20s? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an interesting one, really, because, you know, professionally, I was doing the thing that I loved. You know, I'd started working in telly at 21. I haven't had a day off since. And, you know, I was being successful because I, because I came from a home where I watched TV and I was in an industry full of people who didn't watch TV. It was very, very easy for me to rise through the ranks and to make shows and to invent my own shows and to sell them because, you know, I felt very, very at home. Uh, and so I was being successful and I was, you know, exec producing shows and, and all sorts of things. Uh, and, you know, I had kids very young, uh, which I'm delighted I, I did because I'm 51 now and they're like both in their 20s, which is amazing. You know, what, my big presenting issue was was was, was, a, was a food addiction and, and, and weird behavior around food, which, which I can sort of see would be what a nine year old would have would have set up for himself. Uh, and what do you mean by that? Well, I think if you if you are going to be an addict, which is almost always, how do I run from this pain? How do I run from the fact that you know I'm not where where, where I need to be? When you are nine, food is probably the only thing that's available to you. If food attachment, maybe you know, there's there's there's, there's only a certain amount of things an, an, a nine year old uh, has <laughs> at their disposal. Hot Wheels. I mean, there's there's not a lot you can get addicted to, uh, and so you know, I, I I would have addictive behaviors around food, and that I never sat and thought oh, I've got a problem with my life. I never thought that. I never thought, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not who I'm supposed to be. But, but what I definitely thought was, why, why do I have these eating behaviours? That's weird. Uh, and in a way, they explained my weirdness away for me. I went, you're weird because, because you, you have this weird eating patterns. That's the thing that makes you weird. And you think, no, that's, that's lots of things that make me weird. Um, and so that's the thing that I went to get help for. You know, so that's the first time I went into therapy, uh, which again, from my background, is not something I would have considered. Uh, but it had got to such a stage, and I was so tired of this behaviour, of how weird it was and how dumb it made me feel. What was you the behaviour? Just o overeating and, you know, binge eating and all that kind of, just inability to control food in any way whatsoever. Or if I was controlling it, just being incredibly strict. So either sort of dieting or, or, or being out of control with food, which is much more common than I think uh, we allow as a culture. I think, you know, alcoholism and drug addiction, we get, we understand, and there, there's pathways to sort of uh, getting better. But I think food addiction is, 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 is the sort of last taboo. But, you know, I haven't spoken about it before. The, the messages I get from people just saying, yeah, that's me. Or, you know, my husband came into the kitchen and in tears and just said, that's, that's me. That's been me for 20 years. And that, that's the thing that I've got uh, and has never spoken about it to people. So I think, I think it's really, really, really uh, common. Also, why wouldn't it be, you know, given the food industry, right? Why wouldn't it be? Why, why, would, why would food addiction not, not be a thing? And so I think, yeah, those behaviours where you just go, do you know what? I've got these wonderful kids. I've got this great career. And yet I'm still secretly eating and feeling deeply ashamed of myself. You know, what, what's that, right? And after a while you think, oh, maybe it's not the food. Maybe it's me. You know, maybe the food is a symptom of something rather than the problem, uh, which of course is the case. You know, booze is never the problem, is it? Drugs mm. are never the problem. The, what you're running from is the problem. So yeah, I went to therapy, and honestly, from the first session I did, I, 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 that's my path to getting better. And well, you never not be an addict, but that's my path to kind of going, okay, I get it. I see. I see what this is. Most people, I don't think, will understand when you when you say binge eating and overeating. I think mm. a lot of people listening think, "Well, I I overeat." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But but yeah, what I've course. read f from what you described mm. is a very very different to just overeating a big meal once in a while. Can you give me some detail as to what you mean by? Yeah, and again, addiction? look, it's 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 shaming for me to do so. But but a good example would be, I remember one of the first years with with a, you know talking to the therapist about it, and and it was it was sort of mid. December, so I wasn't going to see him for a few weeks. And he said, look, I hope, you know, I hope Christmas Day is not too triggering because people eat so much on Christmas Day. You know, the mm. classic thing on Christmas Day, oh my God, you know, I ate all this and I ate all the chocolates and the crisps and we had a meal anyway and then there's cheese at night and blah, blah, blah. And I said, honestly, I've eaten like it's Christmas Day every day from my 20s and 30s. That's how, you know, that's what I've done. When I'm 
in, in an episode. You know, everything is like Christmas Day. I'm not eating because I'm hungry. I'm eating because the food is there and because I need I need to not be sitting by myself, you know, and thinking about whatever I need to be thinking about it. So, you know, it's that, it's that idea. It's that, it's, it's that sort of, it's not, oh, aren't I naughty? I had a cream cake. You know, it's aren't I naughty? I had a cream cake. And then I had the other three. And then 20 minutes later, when like there's the, even the tiniest amount of space, I went out and got some more food. You know, it's that. It's it's. I mean, it's an addiction. There's no other way of putting it. It's like having a bottle of vodka, then having another bottle of vodka, then having another bottle of vodka. It's the same thing. Uh, and the second you shine a light on it, listen, some people listening will, will, uh, won't believe it exists. Uh, that's, by the way, absolutely fine. You know, it's, listen, we believe what we believe. But I'm talking to the people for whom this behavior might feel familiar, or who've got friends or relatives to whom this behavior might feel familiar. It's real. You know, it's a real thing. Uh, and it's quite hard to get your way out of because you have to eat, right? But there's ways through it. And the first way through it is to shine a light on it and just say, oh, no, 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 that's, uh, that's me. And to, and, to, and to try and take that shame away from it a bit. When did you realise that it was a, in your own words, a strange behaviour? Because I've got a friend who's been through a similar, well, I've got two friends who've mm. been through very similar things. Um, one of them's, I mean, they're the two closest people. And, you know, I know they've both talked about it very publicly. Um, one of which in a podcast, one of which does talks, she talks about it all the time on her Instagram. Mm. And I've, the two closest people in my life went yeah. through that. And for one of them who, again, she's talked about this publicly, um, that resulted in bulimia um, and a bunch of other very uh, destructive eating patterns. How did you figure out that, that it was different? Well, I think you, you can't, you know, you can, you can fool everybody except yourself you know, finally. And just, you know, a lifetime, you know, when I was a kid, I, I would secretly eat and I would find ways to get food and to, you know, and my mum would go, oh, where have they, all those crisps gone? That's weird. And you'd be like, and, you know, then she started hiding the crisps in places because she thought they kept going missing. Just every day of every month of every year since then, just, just hunting down and finding the food that I wanted uh, and feeling ashamed about it afterwards. Uh, so I, I knew amongst the success I was having and the friends I had and the lovely time I was having with people, I knew I had this weird secret thing that wasn't going away and that made me unhappy and certainly made me unhealthy uh, and that probably at some point I was going to have to do something about. But it took, a, it took a long time. I'm shocked about how long it took before I finally went, do you know what, this is, I need to do something about it. But is, we often understand how normal our behaviour is by mm. comparison. Yeah. Did, were people saying things to you like, like making little jokes and comments and stuff like that? Was no, it, not really. I mean, I could tell I was your... overweight, but uh, but like most addicts, you know, you can. It's amazing how secret you can be about things. Is the truth? You know how you can buy things in secret, consume them in secret, lock yourself away. Uh, you know, not be around people just so you can eat. Um, you know, and plus, of course. Don't forget, you can then go out for a pizza with all your mates who were just having their one meal of the day and you've been eating all day, but you think, oh, great, I get to have a pizza as well. So, you know, socially you can eat a lot as well and then go home and eat more and mm -hmm. eat more convenience foods and and, and what have you. Um, so, yeah, I always knew, I always knew it was, I knew, always knew something was wrong. But again, I think probably I'd added it to the list of things that were weird about me, that I'm tall and I can't see and I've got this weird food thing. So I just thought, Do you know what, you're not really fit for this world is the truth. You know, and you have all of these things that are up with you. So I think I just put it in the list of things that I wasn't probably, I wasn't built to live the life that other people were living. And again, of course, these days, you realise everyone is. Everyone's not built. Everyone goes home and does something weird. Not everyone, but you know what I mean. Mm. People, so many people have got their thing, but I didn't know that in, in those days. I didn't know. I just thought that I was uniquely, you know, not fit for these times. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favour become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.